Okay. The reason I wanted to do this is I'm going to start with a really hard question. And see if you know, because you guys probably are like, we already know all of that. Um, so, if somebody is 66 this year, they turned 65 last year, but they didn't sign up for A or B, and now they, they're signing up for both A and B to start, and they are getting Medicare, what Medigap plans can they use their OE for? Can they get Plan F? You don't really know. You're, you're questioning it in your head. I know, I know. Are you questioning it? Based on, based on the way macros work. Yeah, I think it's yes. Yeah. Look, I feel like he told me it was yes. <laughs> this is one I would go for, and if it was a mistake later, I'd say it. I didn't think it was. Okay, so I think the way it's worded is if you were eligible for Medicare mm -hmm. before right. January 1st of 2020, you can still get the plan out. Right. You don't have to have signed up. Some people were talking about this in Medicare gears this morning, and they were saying, oh, you had to have, it's based on your Part A effective date, but I think it's based on your Part A eligibility date. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, um, so anyway, so I was going to get into some other um, advanced scenarios, but to, to recap, there was a law called MACRA that was signed for anybody that doesn't know that effective January 1st, 2020, they made it where people who became eligible for Medicare part a after January 1st of 2020 became eligible, didn't have to make it effective, but became eligible after January 1st of 2020, they could not purchase Plan F anymore, right? Okay. Um, some of the more complex scenarios, like the one I just went over, where somebody doesn't make their Part A effective, they still would be Plan F o OE eligible if they were eligible for Medicare before January 1st, 2020. So that's a little complex. But another scenario would be the guaranteed issue rights. Okay. So I'm sure we're going to run into this. And the thing about it is, is it's not polished in our head. So a lot of times we're going off of information at the time and in the middle of AEP especially, you can kind of make mistakes um, based on knowing something so well. What is it uh, that Mark Twain quote at the beginning of the big short? It's not what you know that hurts you, it's what you know so to be so true that just isn't so or something like that. So a lot of times when we get in the middle of that, we're like, oh yeah, it works this way. And then you're like, later on when they deny your application, you're like, oh crap, I forgot about X, okay? So on the uh, GI rule for Medicare supplements, you know, which I'm not gonna go back and talk about guaranteed issue and inception all the way, I'm gonna assume anybody watching this or listening knows what a Medigap guaranteed issue period is. But you know, if they lost coverage, whatever, they have their 63 day guaranteed issue uh, period. And uh, what plan, between F and G would be the go-to guaranteed issue plan for them would depend on their eligibility date for Medicare. So if they became eligible for Medicare before January 1st of 2020, their GI plan is the F plan. But if they became effective after January 1st, 2020, plan G is the uh, GI plan. Now, we haven't really seen a lot of GI plan G yet because it's so new because this is the first year. Most of our people that are using a GI period actually became eligible for Medicare before this year. So they're still in that GI. But here soon, what you'll start seeing is people who, like, and you'll probably see it this fall, people who are retiring January 1st, but they still turn 65 like in January of this year, February of this year. So they became eligible for Medicare after January 1st, 2020 but they are you know, using a GI period because they activated their Part B back then. Now we're outside of open enrollment for them because they've had Medicare over six months and they're over, they've, they've been 65 for over six months. So they might have to use that GI scenario this fall for a January 1st effective date. But that GI plan will be the plan G for some of those people. So this is gonna trip, I guarantee you it's gonna trip somebody up. That's why I wanted to go over it. Because you're gonna have because it's tripped me up before. So not that exact, but like things that change over time are unique scenarios like that. This fall will be the first time I think you'll really see it. Have you seen any GI Plan G yet, Stephen? Okay, but it is coming. Does anybody, am I, I'm not perfect on this stuff. 
am I missing something there? That sounds, I mean, from a high level overview of you're, you're, you're at GI, will be plan G. So I'm gonna give you just a real, to make it like a real thing. So we got John and John was turning 65 January, his birthday was January 10th, 1955. So he turned 65 back in January. He kept working, but as a lot of people do that don't know any better, he activated part A and B and he's had it the whole time. So now he comes in in November 11 1 2020 he comes in and he has uh, he's going on he's going to retire at the end of December and he needs his Medicare to be primary January 1st 2021 but John has you know uh, I don't know Parkinson's disease or whatever he's he's all jacked up so John's all jacked up. all jacked up John is you know, he activated his Part B because his human resources manager was a moron. And now he wants it to go into effect January 1st, 2021. He wants a meds up. So when you make it effective, you're gonna use his guaranteed issue right. You're gonna to have to apply it for plan G, not plan F anymore. Okay. Um, another, there was another caveat I was wanting to say on that. Um, now, if he's not all jacked up, John, He's John the ginormously healthy, you know, jacked up, you know, jackrabbit, super healthy guy, right? He's a completely different person. Then, you know, you could offer him plan in and try to get him to go through underwriting. Now this happened a lot back in the day when we had uh, like the AT&T retirees were all GI for plan F but we were trying to you know, get them to go plan G because it was technically a better value and they had to be underwritten. So it was a win-win for everybody, right? Well, there's, there's some reason we've already put out about why plan N is a better value based on rate increase history. And this is a scenario where it would be very advantageous to both parties to really harp on why plan N is better if they're able to be underwritten. Because if you apply them for plan G and they're qualified for a GI period, and they're in this scenario, they are going to force you to use the GI period most likely. They did it to Stephen the other day with, with Aetna? Cigna. Cigna. They forced him. Yeah. I've, I've checked that as a voluntary loss of I mean, it, and there's... They still want you to use GI. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, you want to, you know, if, if you can get them to, if they're very healthy, though, you can get them to go plan in, you can get them through underwriting and you get the full commission on it. Now, if you, if you don't, you know, if it's a scenario where you can't and you have to write a plan G. Now, the hard part of that is you can't go back to F because they don't qualify for F. So it's not F or G anymore. Now you got to go down to N to make it, you know, fully commissionable. But there is a reason to recommend plan N. You know, the only reason we're probably not going really, really hard on recommending plan N is it's a little more to explain. So there's a little bit of la laziness involved. Um, and people are coming in and they already want G. And so you start to talk about plan in and they really lean G. And we do believe in the old saying, sell them what they want and then sell them what they need. I'm not gonna spend all my time trying to talk somebody out of something with such marginal differences. I haven't had anybody's gonna be any more unhappy with a G than they are in. But if it comes down to this scenario, you may wanna push a little bit more to be like, listen, plan in, is probably gonna be a better long-term solution for you. We just have to answer a few health questions to get it. And a lot of times, if you make it about, let's see if you can qualify, because with that one, they're going to be like, yeah, we know we can get a plan G, but plan N is a more long-term, better value, but you got to qualify. Some people are like, wait a minute. I want to know if I qualify. It's like psychological. So, um, 